you know, since day one, you know, Craig's been pouring himself into his community and the kids in his community. And it never was about winning baseball games for him. Um, but because of that, like the product is the way it is. I mean, it's as successful as it can be because you have someone who's selflessly giving himself up his family time, you know, essentially finances, everything else to make sure that the kids in our community who play baseball, they grow up the right way and learn, learn the values that make them successful in life. And because he paid more attention to that piece than he did the X's and O's on the baseball field, his program has had that success. It wasn't the other way around. And um, it's just so often overlooked because all people see are the state titles and the rings, but there's no long list of lives you've changed as a head coach. And, you know, that list is just so much longer than the list of on the field accomplishments. The experiences that Tim Orlowski spoke of came from a Venice team that in 2000 used a mantra from a story that Coach Craig Buckner brought with him from his playing days. We came up with a theme and the kids gravitated to it. They enjoyed the, the whole hold the rope story of how you would want any teammate on your team to, to be responsible for your, your outcome. And, and that when you're comfortable with that and you trust anybody on the team, you'd allow anybody to hold the rope while you're hanging over a cliff. That was a story that actually came from LSU, from Skip Burtman. SEC and we were, uh, you know, at the beginning of the tournament, Coach Skip, you know, pulled us all aside and he threw a rope over his desk and he said, guys, if, you know, if this, if you were dangling over a cliff and, you know, you were going to fall to your death, if, if someone was holding this rope on the other side and you knew they wouldn't let go, uh, you know, which one of your teammates would you want to hold the rope? And, you know, a lot of kids uh, on the players on the team, he pointed us out and he asked, who would you want to hold the rope? And everyone had someone different that they thought was strong, that would never let it go. And, uh, finally, Coach Berman said, guys, when you can tell me that the person that's holding this rope, it doesn't matter who it is. If it is one of our LSU teammates, they will never let it go. That's the kind of trust we have with each other. Then we really got something. So we're playing in the SEC tournament. Actually, he told us that, you know, several weeks before. We're playing in the SEC tournament, and we're in Georgia, and we're getting down, and uh, we're losing one of the games. And someone made a decent play, and one of the players yelled out there, hold the rope. Hold the rope. And then the next player started yelling the dugout. And pretty soon, our spirits, you know, our attitude was a little low. Our spirits rose up. We started remembering that story. Everybody started yelling, hold the rope. We ended up coming back, winning the game and, you know, winning the SEC and, you know, going on to the College World Series. And that was, you know, I believe that motivational story, it was the difference in winning the SEC for us. We were a good team, but that attitude that the attitude that that story gave us during that critical game was so powerful that you know I think if you ask any player on that LSU team they would say that story was a real motivator for us and got us where we need to be from 1986 to 2000 the Skip Burtman motivational story lives on the Indian season starts quickly as a mercy rule the sailors while holding the rope tight they give the area a glimpse of the Indian might As Venice continues to establish itself as a state power, the tribe must travel to earn respect. The Indians continue to frustrate a formidable Dunedin squad using defense and timely hitting to earn another tough road victory. On the road again, after traveling to Orlando and hammering the number three state ranked Wildcats, the Indians solidify their reputation as the road warriors pounding tough opponents in their own backyards. In the last game at the Wellfield Complex, the Indians opened the regional playoffs quickly. They flexed their muscles by posting eight runs in the first inning. In a display of power and pitching, the Tribe proved that last year's run was no fluke and this program was big game tough. because a unique feel and I think we brought that because he had been to a, a finals of the state championship and a runner up before that. So all of a sudden we get a new field and it was still I think a daunting task or very intimidating for, for visiting teams coming in to play us at our new place. 